So whenever you're looking at these scenarios, you want to go through and kind of make assumptions about what your opponent could do. So we already saw that if Ron is opening a little bit loose, then this King Jack suited is a no-brainer shove, unless he's going to like call off really, really wide. Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com, back with another hand where I'm reviewing an interesting spot from the World Series of Poker main event final table. PokerNews.com gave exclusive coverage for this final table over at PokerNews.com, so if you want to see a lot of photos from this very interesting final table that they played in a bubble, and if you want to read about, well, how the whole final table played out, make sure you check that out at PokerNews.com. In this hand, we are looking at a spot where Ron Jenkins, who I don't know a whole lot about, he elected to put in a 2.5 big blind raise. And then poker coaching member Gershon Distenfeld wakes up with King Jack suited with a 10 big blind stack. This is a neat scenario because if you look around at the final table, Gershon is the shallow stack by a decent amount. The only other shallow stack is Ron with about, how many, 16, 17 big blinds to start the hand. And this is an interesting scenario because in the spot for Ron to raise, with there being another 10 big blind stack yet to act and a bunch of big stacks, this is a spot where I have to think Ron should be pretty tight. If Ron should be pretty tight, you gotta be a little bit careful shoving over him. Now I wouldn't fold the King Jack suited. Um, maybe you can justify calling in this spot. You may say, call? Why in the world would you call? Well, notice if you call here and then someone else goes all in and then Ron calls it off, you can then fold the King Jack suited because um, at that point, Ron's going to go broke some portion of the time and you get to move up the payout ladder, right? We are at a major final table. And if someone raises slash goes all in whatever and Ron folds, now you can call it off with there being an extra 2.5 big blinds in the pot. Um, however, it's always important to analyze this spot using ICMizer. ICMizer is a program you can buy at jlpoker.com slash ICM. I use this program a lot to study final table scenarios. Let's go through and enter this scenario. So I already entered the World Series final table structure. We have Ron raising it up here in middle position one, and then it folds around to the hero on the button. You click ICMize, it's gonna go through, it's gonna run the simulation, and then we're going to look at the ranges that it assumes Ron is playing and make sure those are accurate. And we're going to see if this King Jack suited is a shove or if we should consider playing it differently. Okay? So let's take a look. King Jack suited in this scenario. Well, let's take a look at what the opponent is likely doing, what we think the opponent's going to do. It has Ron raising this range. What do we think Ron is actually raising with in this scenario? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's first look at if he is loose and raising kind of wide, which, you know, I don't think is necessarily going to be true, but it may be true. Let's presume he's raising something like this. Okay, this is this would be pretty wide. We click Calculate, then we're going to click ICMIs again, and then we're going to see... Well, we have to go through and, and edit what ICMizer presumes he's going to call with, right? And if we see that he's going to call super wide or super tight, we're going to edit that. Okay. Now let's take a look at the hands he's going to call it off with. He's obviously not going to call off with like 10-9 suited and stuff like that. So let's presume he's going to call off much tighter than this against the 11 big blind shove. Um, eh, you know, maybe this is accurate. Maybe he's a little bit tighter. Who knows? Click calculate, and then we're going to run this one more time. While I see Miser doing its thing, do me a favor. If you enjoy these videos where I analyze final tables and show you the math behind these spots, click the like and subscribe button below. That goes a long way to helping the YouTube overlords know that you like my videos. Also, we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers. It's a lot of subscribers. If you have not subscribed yet, again, please click subscribe. I would appreciate it. It takes you one second and helps me a lot. And we have to figure out something to do when we get 100,000 views. Maybe we should give away a bunch of money. I don't know. Let me know what you think I should do whenever we get to 100,000 subscribers in the comment section below. All right. If that's the strategy Ron is using, where he raises wide and, and then calls off kind of tightly, we see this King Jack suited is a slam dunk all in. 0.19% of the prize pool is what you end by shoving here. And that is just printing money. You're never going to make more, much more than that um, with a hand like this in a final table scenario with only an, a 10 big blind stack. So if 
Ron is raising a little bit too wide and calling off what I think is reasonably. This is a no-brainer all in. Okay, good. Let's go through and edit this again, though. We're going to make this worse. Now let's presume that he's raising much tighter, which, you know, who knows exactly what his strategy is. But let's presume he's doing something like this. This is a pretty tight range that I think, eh, you know, most, most people would probably use in this scenario. And I, I certainly think this is a spot with the stack sizes as we have them laid out here where Ron should be very tight. Um, this is a spot where maybe he's raising more like this, maybe even tighter. So what we do is we want to click calculate again. We're going to run the situation again, and then we are going to um, edit his calling range again. Okay, so here we see if he's using this strategy with this calling range. King Jack suited is an easy fold. Let's edit this calling range, though, because I think this is probably not accurate, or maybe it is. This has him calling off like this. What do we think? Um, what do we think if someone's opening kind of tight? Do we think they're calling off like ace jack offsuit here? I don't know. Sevens probably folds. Ace 10 suited, king jack suited probably fold. Let's say ace jack offsuit folds. And now let's calculate this one more time to see if he's raising tight and calling off a little bit tight what we should do. So we click ICMIs again. It's going to run the spot and we will take a look. All right, now we see that King Jack suited is barely a losing shove. So whenever you're looking at these scenarios, you want to go through and kind of make assumptions about what your opponent could do. So we already saw that if Ron is opening a little bit loose, then this King Jack suited is a no-brainer shove, unless he's going to like call off really, really wide. You're going to find that when you're a short second at the final table, you really don't want to get called. Um... So if he's wide, this is an easy shove. If he's tight and he calls off like semi-tightly with this range here, the hands that are locked, then this is a break-even shove. And when you're a shallow stack, if you can get in a spot where it's probably either break-even or profitable to shove, you should be very, 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 very happy with that outcome. We saw, though, that if Ron shove erases this range, all the hands selected, and then calls off with all the hands in green, then shoving the King Jack suited is a pretty big losing play. So I'm not going to say that this is definitively a good shove, which is what Gershon does, but I like the play. The one thing that would have made me perhaps not shove here and instead elect to call is that when Ron makes it 2.5 big blinds, um, he is, I'm just going to make some broad assumptions here again. I don't know anything about Ron, but typically he's an older guy. When older players make it 2.5 big blinds in a spot where most people are usually using a min raise strategy, that often indicates a slightly tighter range, unless you see them doing it all the time. Again, this was very early in the final table. Who knows what Ron actually does? But if you see an older player race at 2.5 big blinds or three big blinds or three and a half big blinds, basically bigger than normal or bigger than most people are raising to, that's often an indicate of a slightly stronger range in general. So that would make me slightly inclined to not shove here with this King Jack suited. Um, also, the fact that Ron is clearly the second shortest stack really incentivizes him to play tightly. And I'm not sure if he knows that. Again, I, I don't know anything about him. But if he does know that he should be playing pretty tightly in this spot, then that means his raising range is going to be tight. And we already saw that if his raising range is tight, if he calls off with just the good hands, you have almost no fold equity, meaning he's not going to fold out very often, which means you don't win this pot with no contest very often, which is very, very bad for Gershon. So if I was in this spot, I initially told Gershon I thought this would be pretty easy all in because I was presuming Ron would raise slightly wide. I didn't realize he was like clearly the only second shortest stack and that Gershon was clearly the only shortest stack. Um... Thinking about this more, I think the right play is probably to call, like I said. So instead of going all in, because Ron, if anything, is going to be leaning towards being on the tighter side because of the bigger than normal ray size and because he's clearly the shortest stack and there is one very clearly shorter stack, I think the play here is to call. And then if somebody else goes all in and Ron calls, calls then you can easily fold. If someone else goes all in, Ron folds, then you can easily call with an extra 2.5 big blinds in the pot. So I think that's probably the right play. That said... We already generally showed that for the most part, unless Ron plays this spot perfectly, which 
It's actually kind of difficult to do. Um, this is either a break-even play or a winning play. So either way, I think this is probably fine, and I certainly don't fault him for the play. I like it. It's fine. He gets it all in. He loses. And Gershon busts out in eighth place for a, a big bummer for the uh, charity community, who he was donating all of his World Series of Poker cash to. And, um, well, a big bummer for me because I spent a lot of time coaching him leading up to the final table and a big bummer for him. That said, he had some great interviews with PokerNews.com afterwards where he presented himself in an amazingly great light. Also, he uh, represented poker coaching very, very well. And I could not have asked for a better student leading up to this spot. And uh, he wasn't results-oriented about it, right? If you watched my earlier video where he made a very fine play, this hand, I think he made a fine play. Maybe not the most perfect play, but certainly very justifiable and definitely not like spewing money all over the place. Certainly either a, usually like a break-even play or small winning play. He has to be happy with, with the, um, the way it, the way it happened, even though the cards did not come in his favor. He's allowed to spike sometime, right? <laughs> not this time though. So anyway, that was Gershon's run at the final table. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, click the like button below. Also, if you want some tips to help you improve your tournament skills, check out pokercoaching.com slash tournament tips for that free downloadable PDF. Good luck in your games. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more strategy lessons, preflop charts, and interactive quizzes, make sure you get your free membership to pokercoaching.com right now at pokercoaching.com slash free. I'll talk to you next time.